yeah so we are starting the session now uh, you will be able to see the screen uh, and the screen itself you will be seeing youtube uh, upstocks.com so this is the website the new website that we have uh, launched so on the website itself you will be seeing uh, the pictures of our platform so you'll see the mobile version as well as the web version so uh, on this website itself uh, we have given a link so you will see the link over here this is this is called up stocks pro web so before starting the session let me introduce myself uh, my name is orpheus almeida uh, i am a part of the product research and development team so uh, the motive of this uh, video is like we got questions from most of our users saying that uh, they wanted to know how to use the software and what all features we are looking for they are uh, looking forward we are looking forward to bring into upstocks as well uh, there are a few things which are we have introduced newly something called as a code panel so all those things uh, we needed to explain so that's the reason we are recording this video and it's a live webinar so uh, as i said previously if if you have any anything to comment or anything to say you can just you can just uh, write in the comment sections below comment sections below and uh, we'll be replying in there and there itself so uh, let us start with the webinar if you can see my screen uh, i have uh, written the link name as pro.upstocks.com so this is the url to the website the web version so in this if you can see that uh, we have a login page and below that you will be seeing two more options these are the mobile apps we have one uh, designed for android as well as an ios so yesterday from yesterday the ios app uh, was available in app store so if you wish to download it from a play store or an, or an app store you can just uh, type up stocks and it will give you the desired results so let us start with the webinar first so i'll just log in into my account so lo the login process is very simple uh, you just enter your client id followed by the password that you are using uh, if you are a, a customer of uh, rksv so in that case whatever password you use for nest that same password you need to use it over here so i'll use mine once you click on the login button it will take you to the second page uh, which is the two factor verification this is required from the exchange so this is a mandate so we have we have just simplified it very simple uh, we are just asking for the year of birth so you just need to enter your year of birth and this is something that we wanted to keep it simple because sometimes it is like very difficult to know if you're using nest in that we asked nearly two questions each time so that is sometimes uh, time consuming so if you see the login process is very fast i just clicked on it and it took me to the 2fa page so i'll just input my year of birth i click on the verify button and now it has taken me it is taking me to the home page so this is my home page uh, if you can see uh, i have various small small widgets and these are fixed widgets you cannot move them as of now so uh, on the left hand side you'll see a list kind of a widget which is actually a watch list so this watch list is where you will be uh, you will be like entering all the script names so if i have like i only trade on like 10 scripts so i only want to see those scripts so you can create a watch list and you can add those scripts in this list so we will we will be covering uh, that session first then in the center you will see something called as chart so this is a chart widget so normally people who who use uh, charting for their analysis all the technical studies are available into this charting so here the chart thing will be uh, i will be adding the chart section into this and we will be plotting some indicators some study lines 
some drawing tools and I'll show you what all intervals are there so this will be the second session and then we have a order book and a trade book so this is a combined widget so order book is basically when you place any of the orders so it, it will show you the status and what was the entry that you put so the status will be like completed rejected or if it's open or it's trigger pending and the price and everything then on the right hand side we have something called as code panel so code panel is a very new feature that we have added uh, it is something called as speed trading as well so this i will be uh, explaining like the fourth thing and then we have positions and holdings so if there are any futures positions option positions or any intraday positions then it will be reflecting in this particular position book and then we have a holding section so holding session is something where the dmat holdings if you, if you're carrying something for a long term so this is a place where it will show you the holdings so let us start uh, one by one we, with each and everything so on the left i have a watch list so i already have one watch list which say, which says hot stocks so i will just uh, click on the word hot stocks and a particular list will allocate a drop down i need to create one watch list as of now so what i'll do is like i'll click on the add button over here if you can see i click on the add button so i'll get a new field which says enter watch list name so i will give some name to this so say like top stocks so i have written top stocks once i enter the name i'll click on the done button and if you can see it has added top stocks into the list now if i want to modify this particular any of the stock any of the watch list names i can click on the edit button if i click on the edit button i can just click here i want to like edit the watch list names i can just like backspace top or like, like best stocks and if i want to i can click the done button but before that if i want to delete something delete any watch list so you can click on the cross button over here it will ask for a confirmation and once you click on the delete button it will get deleted so i'm on i'm not deleting as of now so i'll just click on the cancel button and then i'll click on the done button so the best stock watch list has been added so i'll click on that so i clicked on the best stocks and now it is showing me an, an empty list because i have not created uh, i just created the list and there was no stocks into that so this is the first thing so this is like uh, creating a watch list then you can rename it you can delete it from the options that i've just showed the first thing that you are showing in the list is like indices so indices is like a predefined watch list so uh, in this uh, you can add a uh, particular indexes like nifty or sensex or whatever indexes that we uh, that are provided by the exchange so we'll uh, go on to that uh, once we are done with the watch list script addition so i'll click on the best stocks as of now so here it says that you haven't added any stocks so add add stocks you want to add and follow them in just a click so i'll click on this button or i have a plus sign here as well so if i click on the plus sign uh, I'll get a search bar. So in the search bar, if you can see, we have various small, small sections such as all, cash, futures, options, and currency. So uh, this search we have designed in such a way that uh, search as if you're searching something on Google. So I want to add a stock called as Reliance. And as I start typing, I will keep getting the results so in this case i'll do one thing i'll just make the search a little complicated so i'll uh, i want to search for reliance future so what i'll do is like i'll i'll write reliance space I'll write reliance futures and I, I will get all the results related to reliance futures so in this case if you can see i've got reliance august future reliance september future and reliance october future now i'm getting something called as r power as well because once you get all the results of reliance with the symbol name it goes into filtering on the basis of the company name so this is reliance power so this is the next 
result that we'll be seeing over here. Then we have RCOM, which is Lens Communications. So first, it always searches for a symbol name and then followed by the company name. In this case, what I'll do is like, if I want to add this particular script to my watch list, so I can click on the plus button and the plus will get converted to a cross mark. So whenever you'll see a cross mark, that means a script is already present in your watch list. If you want to remove it, so the one way of removing is like you can just click on this and it will get removed again. So as of now, I just want to see whether this script is added to my watch list or not. So I'll click on this button again. I'll click on the go button, uh, I'll go on the back button and I'll see that Reliance August Futures is added to my list. So as I said, you can delete the script by just right clicking on it and click on the delete button or else by the same thing, same way, I just search Reliance Future. I can just click on this and click on the back button. So the script has been deleted. So these are the two ways of deleting a script. And I'll just I'll just uh, go more into detail for the search bar because this is where uh, some of the users are getting confused that how do you search a script? So uh, what about an option? If I want to search any script, which if, like a call or a put. So I'll do one thing, I'll search for a nifty call of 8,500. Uh, 8, so I'll type nifty all 8500. So once I type this, see, I have got the best result available over here. So th this which says nifty August 16, 8500 call, nifty September 16, 8500 call, nifty October 16, 8500 call. So I have got all the results over here. If I want to search a put, I can just write put and it has given me the result of put. So I want to add this put to my list. I'll just click on this. It has got added. I want to add a call. It has got added. If I want to add a nifty future, I can just type nifty future. So I'll see a nifty future over here. Nifty August 16 future. I'll just click on this and it will get added to the list. So I have currently added three scripts over here. So this is how you add a script. Now we have a right click available on this particular script. So if you just right click on any of the script, so the various options are displayed such as place an order. This will take you to the buy order entry from you can place a new order for this particular stock. If I click on chart, then a chart will be loaded. So if I just click on this chart, so you will see on the chart section, a chart is loaded that is of Nifty. Then the last thing is the delete option. So if you click on delete, it will get deleted. So I have added three stocks uh, into this. So in the previous list, I had uh, multiple stocks. So I'm not going to add all those in best stock. So I have uh, most of the stocks added into hot stocks. This is the first watch list that I have prepared. So if there were also questions that how do we rearrange the watch list? Like I have uh, Z learning second last. I want to place this first. So I'll just click on this. I'll just drag it up and I'll drop it. So this is how I rearrange stocks. If I want bang nifty August, like at the bottom, I'll just take it at the bottom and drop it. I want Tata Motors in the third place. I'll just drag and take it up. I'll drag it and drop it. So this is how we just drag and drop and rearrange the scripts in the watch list. Now, this is just, this is just showing you the prices and the absolute change. So what about there are various other options available in a watch list? Like you have got something called as volume, you have got something called as open, high, low, close, then there are, there are various rates and everything. So that is why we have an expanded column over here. So if you click on this arrow, this widget will be expanded. So I'm just clicking on this arrow. And if you can see this over here, the entire widget gets expanded. So if I click on Reliance, 
this is our detailed view where all the best five rates and the additional information about the stock you will be able to see so uh, in this column if you can check here we have price here we have change here we have percent change then this is level one which says uh, level one meaning this the first line of the best five reach which is also known as market depth so this is the first line so you can see bid, bid quantity, bid rate, ask rate, ask quantity. Then we have something called as volume. Then for option traders and futures traders, we have something called as open interest. OI stands for open interest. Then we have the ATP, which stands for average trade price. Then we have something called as underlying LTP. This is the spot value. And these are all the primary uh, we conducted a survey and based on the survey we got to know that uh, what all things are primarily important for a trader so based on the survey we have uh, kept all this these things as a primary thing and this particular list keeps on updating when the market is open but if you want any detailed information more information about it you can just click on this particular any of the script so currently if you are seeing this is the detail view on the right so this detail view says reliance nfo august futures and if i want to see a detailed view of tata motors so i'll just click on this and once i click on tata motors you will see the detail view has been updated to tata motors so this is Tata Motors now. This is August Futures. And these are all the open, high, low, close. Then we have 52 week, high, low, the circuit levels. So these are, this is the information uh, that we got to know that is used secondly, secondary by the traders. So that is why we have kept that on one click. So all these things, whatever it is present in the watch list gets updated on a live basis it, it is there is no delay nothing happening this is this is what we have developed like so we are using web sockets that is how uh, on the basis of what this technology has been developed if you if you want to check uh, how the rates are so currently we don't have the market running so i won't be able to show you the exact live feeds but if you if you open any day any day during the market session and if you want to compare the rates with uh, how a desktop software works it will match you then and there itself. There won't be even a one second delay. So this is how powerful the web platform that we have designed. So uh, the benefits of using Upstocks Pro is like, you can log in from any system, whether it can be a Mac OS or it could be a Linux OS or it can be a Windows OS. You don't need to download anything on your system you just have to go into a web browser just type pro.upstocks.com and you can just log in with that so uh, when you check rates you can just uh, check and match if you feel like if there could be a delay so we are very confident that this is not going to be a delay and we have tested it thoroughly so in this uh, particular section if you see there are a lot of scripts even here you can do the rearranging and once you rearrange over here and you just Again, go to the mini view, you see that script rearranged. So, yeah, so if I want to place any orders on Suzlon, so how should I do it? Now, in this section, I'll just take Sun Pharma in this case. So this is Sun Pharma. So Sun Pharma equity, EQ means equity script, that's a cash script. So if I click on this, you will get a buy and a sell button. So buy basically your place, you want to place a buy order and sell meaning you want to place a sell order. Now you will see that there is something called as one in the center. This is nothing but the quantity session. Now, whenever you wish to buy something, so you need to tell the other person that how much quantity you want to buy in. So that is what you're going to update it over here. So I want to like buy hundred quantities. I'll click on the buy button and you'll see a buy order entry opens up. So this is the order entry screen from where you're going to place all the orders. So if you want to buy something, if you want to sell something, so this is the screen that it will take you to. 
So you just need to input few of the things into this and your order will be placed. So let us learn how you place an order with Upstocks. So for placing an order, this is one thing that you can just input the quantity and click on the buy sell button or you can just right click and click on the place order button. So this will take you to the buy order entry. We have a button at the top which says a buy or a sell. So in this case, if you wanted to sell something and you clicked on buy and now instead of selling, uh, just clicking and closing this back, it's better that you can just switch it from here itself. So this button will help you to switch between a buy and a sell. Then we have a script name added over here, which says that which script is it, like Sun Pharma Equities, and the last traded price of that particular script. Then we have something called as complexity. Now this column we have added just to, just to bifurcate between a complex order and a simple order. A simple order is something like a limit order, or a market order, or a stop loss order. With complex orders, we have three three kind of complex orders. If, if I click on the drop down, you will see the three complex orders. First is AMO. AMO stands for after market orders. So uh, AM, when is AMO used basically? So if uh, the markets are not running, if I want to place an after market order, you can just click on AMO. And during non-market hours, you can place this order. And when the market opens on the next trading session, these orders are pushed into the market and you get the desired status, whether it is like rejected or accepted or complete or open. So this is how you use an AMO. Then secondly, we have something called as CO. CO stands for cover order. So we normally provide higher leverage when you use something like a CO or an OCO. So we'll be covering CO. Uh, once we are done with the simple complexity, then we have something called as OCO. OCO is uh, similar to CO, and even uh, here we give some additional leverage. So even we will be studying about this in a while now. So let us start with a simple order. So this is the simple. Uh, when whenever you uh, select simple, you need to check all the other fields as well. So I'll come to the order type. So order type tells you that uh, what kind of an order you wish to place, whether it could be a market order, a limit order, or a stop loss limit order, or a market limit order. So let's start with a market order. So what do you mean by a market order? Whenever you place uh, any order selecting market, so whatever rate is available into the market, it will get bought at that particular rate. What happens with a limit order? Limit order is something, uh, say about, if you see the price currently over here is like 841. So I want, I feel that this particular price will come down to 835. So I can just input the price as 835 and I can place the order. Now what will happen is like my order will go into the exchange and it will wait for that particular price to reach up to 835. Once it falls up to 835, then the order gets triggered and then get it, it gets completed. And if the particular rate is not reached, then it gets canceled by the end of the day. So this is how you use a market and a limit order. We'll get back to stop loss and stop loss market in a while now. So I'll just, uh, I'll just show you how a limit and a market order works. Then we have something called, called as product types. So, in product, we have something called as intraday and delivery. Now, what do you mean by intraday and what do you mean by delivery? Intraday is a day order. So uh, in this, if you select intraday and if you place any of the orders, we will be giving you some leverage. So if, if you're trading on equities, so we provide like 15 times exposure. If you're trading on futures, then like three times. So these, this, this, this is the kind of leverage that we provide on intraday orders. But for when you place an intraday order, as we have given you some margin, so those orders get squared off at 315. So if you want to place an intraday order, you can just select intraday and place the order. Then there is something called as delivery. So what do you mean by delivery? Delivery is something uh, where you wish to carry the position for the next day. 
so if if i want to buy some shares and i want to hold them for a long period of time so i will select delivery and this shares after once i buy this particular shares this shares will go to my dmat account so this is where you're telling the system whether you wish to place it in intraday or delivery so the basically the delivery thing is as such that once you buy it in delivery it goes to your dmat so we are not going to square off that till the time you tell us to square off that but in intraday as there is an obligation where you have borrowed some money from us where we have given you some leverage to trade with so there you have an obligation where we will be we will be squaring up your position at 315 so that is how a intraday and a delivery order works so if you wish to carry the position for the next day so always always uh, select it as delivery if you want to gain some leverage for an intraday so you can select that as an intraday then we have something called as tif tif stands for time in force this is nothing but the validity of the order now what is a day order and what is an ioc order so day order when you place a day order what happens is like uh, in this case uh, we are placing the order at 835 and the current rate you can see is 841.90 so if you just select day from here and when you push this order into the exchange it will go into the exchange it will check whether the available price is there or not if it's not there it will wait for the price to fall up till 835 and then it will get bought but there is also one another time in force which says ioc ioc stands for immediate or cancel now what happens with this kind of an order is you send an order it will check whether 835 is available or not if it doesn't matches up it will cancel the order so this is called as immediate or cancel so we always recommend if you wish to buy something then you always place a day order so that it will wait for the rate to fall and it will get put uh, it will get triggered so this is how you place a normal buy order so there is also called as quantity which we had inputted as 100 over here so it got automatically recorded over here so we are now play, going to place a limit order at 835 so i'll just push this order by clicking on the buy button once i click on the buy button it will bring me to a confirm page where it will show me what all things i have selected it will take a final confirmation from me and then i can just click on the buy button again and it will push the particular order into the exchange but by any chance i feel no 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 this is not the price that i wanted to buy at i want to i just want to modify this so there is a back button over here you can just click on that so i'll once i click on this it will bring me to again to the order entry screen i can just modify the price like i wanted to buy at 830 and then i'll click on the buy button again so it will again take me to the confirm page it will again show me what the price is and then again i can click on the buy button and it will it is going to push the order into the exchange so currently i'm placing an order for 100 quantity at the price of 830 so as i placed it so just a second so my order has got rejected if you can see over here so this is my order book basically whenever and whenever our orders are placed then once the order is placed you will be able to see all the orders into the order book i can expand the order book but before before i go to the expansion i'll show you this thing uh, this is the mini view of order book and we have a drop down which says all open and closed in all you will be able to see all kind of statuses such as rejected complete open or trigger pending or rejected so you'll see all the statuses over there if i want to see only my open orders so orders which are not yet triggered so you just click on the open section so if you can see i don't have any open orders now and if i click on closed so i'll be able to see like all the closed orders 
such as complete rejected cancel so I'll, as of now I'll click on all and these are all the orders that I'm able to see now what we have done is like most of the time when you place an order and the order is like partially filled so it is like very difficult to make out whether the particular order is filled or not so you will see the status as open over here when a, a particular order is partially filled but you also need to know that how much quantity is partially filled so in this in this quantity section it will always show you the total quantity which is 100 and these are both the bifurcations such as a traded quantity and a pending quantity so your trading quantity it will show you how much is your traded quantity and how much is your pending quantity now if i just click on the expand button if I, if i can see the same thing has been expanded so i was able to see up till this now i am able to see also this particular columns so this is my rejected order so in my rejected order here it is showing me that 100 quantity has been cancelled there is nothing in pending and there is nothing being traded and here i have something called as access bank so access bank i had placed it uh, placed it previously and it is complete so i had placed an order for 100 quantities of access bank and it is showing me under traded quantity as 100 so as I said, if there is an open order and if it is partially filled, then you will be able to see open status over here. You will see the total quantity that you had placed for. It will show you how much has been traded and it will also show you how much is pending. Then there could also be a case where an order was open and you canceled it, but the particular orders was partially filled. So in that case, you will see the total quantity over here total quantity over here in the quantity section then you will see the traded quantity how much it was traded and then your cancel quantity column will also get filled with the number of quantity that was cancelled so this is how you read a order book so the order book is always used to know the status whether my order has been uh, completed or rejected or cancelled so in this case I have placed a multiple orders now so if you can check over here uh, this was uh, the order for Reliance August Futures. So if I'm checking over here, you'll see my order was rejected and I got a rejection reason for it. So the reasons, this is, this is an internal rejection. Uh, the markets are not open for today. So the adapter is connected to something. So whenever you'll get a margin shortfall or something, some kind of a, that of a reason, so you will be able to see uh, the particular reason in this section. So I'll 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 just uh, do one thing. I'll just I'll just show you the exact reason how it works. So I'm just uh, relogging again. So I want uh, a rejection which says I'll, I'll, I'll put something for a circuit limits. So I'll, what if I place an order at the price of one. So I have got a rejection. So I placed an order for ICICI at the price of one. So there is something called a circuit limits. So circuit limits is like there is an upper circuit and a lower circuit. Only in between that you can place a price. This is from the exchange. So if you check over here, I have got a notification bar after placing an order and it says check circuit limits. So this has been a rejection because of my circuit limits. So I'll get a notification here saying the rejection reason. But if by any chance I want to see the rejection reason in the book itself, so I need to expand this. I need to click on rejected and this will show me the rejection reason. So we have kept all the books uh, similar to a uh, watch list. So in a watch list as well, if I go to a watch list again, you will see that there is a detail view on the right in black. So this is like the additional information which is not required primarily. So it is available on one click. The same that we have done for an order book and a positions book so if you can see so this information is primarily required so we have kept it over here 
if you click on any of the particular scripts then you will see the additional information over here into this section so this is uh, the order book also if i wanted to know that there is a case where uh, assume that you have placed an order for a big order for like 1000 or 10000 quantity now the the trade book will always show, show you the breakdown as in how the trades have been happened now here if you can see i had placed three orders which were completed and it was just for like uh, a small quantity so it came at one shot but there is a possibility that you might get the trades the trades in a breaking way such as you get 1000 first then you get 2000 then you get 3000 then you get 1000 again so you'll get all the single single entries so it is sometimes not possible to find out the actual price on which the particular order has been traded so sometimes this is our trade book by the way and sometimes it is difficult to make out from a trade book that uh, it will show me that it has been executed but showing an average price is difficult uh, in a trade book so what we have done is like in order book we have a column if you can check this access bank in access bank you can check the status which says complete so at the end you can see an average price this average price shows you at what price your order was executed so this is 570 so my order got executed at 570 then I have access bank uh, sorry ICICI bank so this ICICI bank says my order was executed at 258.30 then again I placed one more access uh, ICICI bank for the rate of 257.40 so this is how you can check the average price if if there is a if the if the trade book is showing multiple entries for one single order then this is the right way of reading the actual price at what it got traded so what is the difference between a price and average price so a price field is something that you're going to input but if it gets traded as uh, as in, in multiple prices then the average price is always shown into the average prices column so this is how it is helpful so this is how you actually read an order book so i'll go again back to the order entry screen so even in the watch list section, you, if you click on any of the scripts, you will get a drop down. So this drop down will show you the best five rates and the buy and sell buttons. So if you click on Tata Motors, it will show you the best five rates, the bid and ask, which is also known as market dip for Tata Motors August futures. Then you have got a buy button, you have got a sell button. This will be the rate on which your buy order will go this is the rate on which your sell order will go so if I come to Sun Pharma again because that was a script which we had open so this is a script so previously we placed an order at 830 now what if I want to place an order and I want it to get executed then in there itself so I will play I will just select market and I'll push the order into the exchange so as you can see uh, market is not on but today we have a mock session so mock session is similar to a live session but this is just a particular drill that is uh, scheduled from the exchange just to test few of the things on the broker level so even if uh, if you see that some of the orders are getting completed then how is it possible the market is not uh, live then how the orders are going so this is this is uh, this won't affect your trading of friday the closing that has happened as per friday the same way it will open on a monday but this is just this is just a, a drill that is happening under nsd and we they have it every month so that is why we are scheduled this particular session of for this saturday so this is uh, the order my order has got kind of completed now i had just placed it from one quantity so it got completed then and there itself so you can see the price at which it got executed now i'll try to place a limit order at so it got traded at a price of 924 so i'll placed 
place an order uh, it's like 900 and i'll place it if you can see my order has is now open into the market so i just placed an order to show you how the bifurcations work like i have an open over i just click on open so it will only show me the open orders i'll just maximize it so I'll, it will just show me an open if i click on closed so it will sh only show me the closed orders if i click on all it will show me all the orders now what if i want to modify this open order i feel that okay fine the rate is at 900 i want to place it at 920 so i will just right click on this when i right click i'll get all the options so you you will never get a right click on uh, any of the other orders oh the order got traded at 900 so i'll just place one more order to show how the modification works so i'll place it at 900 and 880 so so this is uh, the open order that i've just placed so whenever you right click on an open order or trigger pending order you always get a pop-up which says whether you want to modify or cancel an order when you click on complete right click on complete or rejected you won't be able to do anything because those are closed orders that is these are either traded or these are being cancelled from the exchange but whenever you see something in this pending quantity column you will see the status as open or it will say as trigger pending. So you normally get a trigger pending status when you're placing something called as a stop loss order. We will get that as get to that as well. So in this case, I'll just right click, I'll click on the modify order button. So again, I will get a pop-up which says uh, what all things I had inputted for this particular order. Now, if you can see some of the things have been grayed out. So such as I cannot change the product, I cannot change the complexity. So you can, you won't be able to change the particular complexity or the product. If you wish to do so, then you will need to cancel this order and you need to place the, a fresh order with uh, the new product type or complexity. So in this case, what all things I can modify is the time and force, the quantity, say about I will be raised to 10, and the price, say about 881. And I click on modify it will show me the confirm order page then I click on modify again so I'll get a notification stating that you had placed for 10 shares for 881 and see it has got it has got modified to 10 quantities and the price is now at 881 if I want to cancel this order I can just right click again I'll click on cancel order I'll get a pop-up stating that whether you wish to cancel this order or not I'll click on a yes and you can see that my order has been canceled now if if you would have noticed uh, previously my order was in pending if you can if you can just check uh, my order was in pending now it has got canceled so it has updated the cancel quantity section over here previously it was in pending so this is how this particular section will be useful during your trading time. So your order book will always help you to know what all orders have been triggered, what all orders have been uh, open. And this average price will always help you to know the actual price. We have something called as a filter button on the top, if you can check over here. So what this filter button does is like, you can just click on this, and I want to only check if if I if the list in this order book is like very big. So I just want to search for Bank Nifty, whether I have where, where is Bank Nifty. I just want to see what all the contracts of Bank Nifty. So I can just start typing Bank Nifty. As I type Bank Nifty, you will only see the results of Bank Nifty. If I want Sun Pharma, I will just start typing Sun Pharma and it will show me all the results of Sun Pharma. So this is how you can use the filter button. So if you want to just uh, clear this particular field, you can click on either you can use a backspace from your keyboard or you can just click on this X button and it will clear the search again. You can click on the back button and everything is reset it again. So this is the order book. Now we will get back again to the order entry screen because uh, we have just studied limit and market now. 
now we will go to something called a stop loss market and stop loss limit so what do you mean by a stop loss so as the name suggests a stop loss is basically stopping your losses so assume that uh, you have bought something at 800 and 841.90 and you have bought something but now you feel that what if i incur losses into this so i don't i might get busy with something or the other work and i might forget to watch the particular script so what i do is like i want to just protect that particular order so that i can just incur a certain amount of loss so in that case if you feel that 841 it has got traded at and you want to protect it up to 830 so i don't want the loss to go beyond 830 so what what you will do is like firstly you have options to select a stop loss market or a stop loss limit so what these both are so all the stop loss orders orders are passive orders they, they are not active orders so whenever you place a stop loss order it goes into the system and it waits for the passive order to get activated now the activation from a passive to active order is done by a trigger price so whenever of the particular market reaches the particular price reaches a trigger price your order gets activated so the activation price will be known as the trigger price so in this case we will be inputting that as 830 so what will happen is like this particular stop loss market now i'll just i'll just change the particular order entry over here because as i said i had bought at 800, 841 so now the stop loss that i will be putting that will be for squaring off my positions so in this case my square off means so my uh, square off means uh, i'm going to sell off this position so i will be placing a stop loss on the sell side so i'll be selecting the order entry as sell from here and i will be inputting the trigger price as 830 now what will happen now once i place this order this price uh, this particular order will go and uh, it will get passive into the system once the particular ltp the last red price reaches from uh, comes to 830 the order will get ex uh, particular activated and then it will get triggered so this is how a stop loss works but there is also something called as stop loss stop loss limit so the stop loss limit is similar to stop loss market but what happens in this case is like when when you reach up to 830 when we reach up to 830 your order will get active and it has a range for execution now in the previous one that is the stop loss market we didn't provide any range if you can just notice over here we had just selected slm and the price field it was not asking for any of the price so what happens is like when once your order gets uh, activated when it uh, when it reaches up to 830 it turns from passive to active and when it once it gets activated it will get sold off at the best price available but in the case of a stop loss limit it will get activated and you have to give a range so at, we have to give a range at a certain price there is no price uh, defined you can keep this as 830 as well but what will happen if you keep this as 830 the order won't get time to get uh, activated so like when it reaches 830 it won't get activated because you have placed both the prices at the same range so we always recommend either you keep it as 825 or you keep it at 820 so once this particular uh, trigger price reaches to 830 this order will get activated and it will start executing so this is how you use a stop loss limit order so uh, we normally recommend that uh, if you don't know how to use a stop loss limit order you always use a stop loss market order so because when you use a stop loss market order you just have to give one particular entry such as 830 and it gets it gets activated at the that particular rate and it starts squaring off from there itself so it is always safe to use a stop loss market order if you don't know how to use a stop loss limit order or else if you don't want to keep a difference 
so if i place this particular order so i have just placed this order and you can see over here i have got the status as trigger pending so this is my stop loss order if you can check this particular order type as stop loss market my trigger price at 830 by the way this is my order book from where i am currently viewing it so this is 830 and you will notice that the status is tgr pending so that is that stands for trigger pending so whenever you place anything with the order type as stop loss market or the stop loss limit you will you will see the status as trigger pending so trigger pending is something like an open order but just to bifurcate between a normal order and a stop loss order the status you will be seeing as trigger pending so if you can just check uh, the order book under open you will be seeing this as trigger pending because as i said this is again an open order so then again few people might be uh, if you people can catch that this is again you you can modify this particular order because still it isn't open if you can you cannot do the same for any of the other orders like completed order or cancel order if i'm right clicking on this nothing is happening but if i'm right clicking on a trigger pending order you are getting an order to modify this order or to cancel this order so again when you click on the modify order entry some fields will always be disabled which will be complexity and the product type you cannot do anything about that then you can modify the quantity you can modify the trigger price you can modify the time in force so in this case i'm modifying it to like about 835 so and just modifying and placing this order so now you can see that this has been modified by the way every time uh, when you whenever you place any of the orders the notification bar will open up and this will show you that what has actually happened so this is this will act like a summary uh, this will always show you how what all activities you have done to, with the regards to the order entry so in this case uh, it says that you have modified successfully so you can just close this so if any 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 of them uh, they feel like uh, this notification bar should not open each other time, or every time i have to go and click over here you can just press an escape key and it will get closed so so this was uh, we have we have completed all the four things like a market order or limit order what do you mean my stop loss order so this we have completed now we will move to some of the complex order entries so in the complex order entries we have amo amo is the you will have same kind of options for an amo like a limit stop loss or a market order as i previously said amo stands for aftermarket orders now aftermarket order timings are from 6 30 to 12 midnight and from 4 in the morning to like 9 uh, till 9 in the morning so if you place any orders during this particular time your orders will be accepted it will be stored at our end and when the market opens at 9 15 your orders will be pushed in the market and it will the market will give you the desired status whether it is uh, something called as uh, whether it has been executed, rejected, or they are in open. So, so if I try to place it now, you will get something like this. If you can see, the status will show that this is an AM order. I'll just expand this for you. So the order book will always show me what the status is. So it has accepted your order as AMO so you can bifurcate i mean sometimes if, if we show this as open then it will be very difficult for you to identify between so many records so we have kept it as amo you can again modify your amo you can again cancel your amo so this this all these things are possible with your aftermarket orders so we are now getting to two of the very important uh, complexities one is a cover order and the other one is 
and OCO. Now OCO stands for one cancels the other. So before that, we'll go to cover order. Now, what is, what are the benefits of a cover order? Why why we are kept it separate? What what is the advantages that a user will get when when he places a cover order? Now, whenever you place a simple order, we do provide some of uh, some leverage to you that is in equity is required like fifteen times five and oh, it's like three times. But whenever you're using a cover order or a or an OCO, we are going to provide you an additional leverage. So the additional leverage will be like uh, 20 times for equities. Then we have uh, like four times for futures and options. Then we have something like seven times, up to seven times for futures and four times for options. So all these different kind of leverages will be provided for you uh, in the cover order and an OCO. So this leverage is more than a normal intraday product. Now, how can we do it? Uh, how is it possible to provide so much of a leverage? Now, the only thing is like, this is not an independent order. This is a dependent order. Now, what do you mean by independent or a dependent order? Now, a dep uh, de independent order is like the one that we placed in with the complexity as simple. So whenever you're placing an order, when you're placing an, an order, it goes into the exchange and it doesn't have any dependency with any of the orders. It is completely independent. But whenever you're placing a CO, you need to compulsory set a stop loss at the time of placing the first leg. So what do you mean by a leg? Uh, in cover order, we have two legs. One is a uh, first leg and the second leg. So the first leg will be always uh, your buying order and your second leg will always be a selling stop loss if you are short selling something then your first leg will be a sell order and your stop loss will be a buying your second leg will be a buying stop loss so this is how a cover order works so if you can just check into this screen uh, you are seeing a co over here your order type is freeze to market your product types is freeze to market uh, intraday and your time in force is a freeze today and the only thing which is editable is the quantity and a trigger price now in a cover order your first leg will always go as market so that is a reason this is freeze to market and cover order is an intraday order you cannot you cannot carry forward the order for uh, the next day so that's a reason this has been the product type has been freeze to intraday so whenever you place this kind of an order, it will ask you for a trigger price. So in this case, I'm placing a buy cover order. So by default, my first leg will be a market order. So that's the reason it won't ask me to input a price, but it will definitely ask me for a selling stop loss. So while for inputting a selling stop loss, I need to input my trigger price. Now trigger price should be in some of the other range. This range is decided by a risk management to provide you some higher leverage. So I have to input the particular trigger price within this particular range. So here the range starts from 757 to 841. So if I'm placing anything out of this range, like a 600 and I'm placing the order, it will stop me then and there itself. So you will see a red line over here and you'll see a reason over here. So it says trigger price must remain within the specified range. So I am inputting the range as 830. And if I place this order, it will ask, it will show me what all things I have selected. And as I click on this, now I have pushed this order. And if after pushing, if you can see, Okay, just a second. Yeah. If I can see, uh, these are the two orders. I just placed one order, but I'm able to see two orders over here. So that is where the first leg and second leg that I was just talking about. So here you are able to see this as a completed one and this as a stop loss. So my first leg is always a market order. So that was a market order. That's the reason it got executed then and there itself. And I had placed a stop loss at 830. 
So I'm able to see this as a trigger price at 830 and the status as trigger pending. So you will be able to see the product now as CEO, that is a cover order, which will help you to identify between an intraday order or a delivery order on, and a cover order. So you'll be able to see it over here. Now, this is still open. That's the reason you'll be able to see the quantity as pending quantity as one over here. And you are able to see the status as completed. Now, what if this, this particular uh, order has got triggered? So what if you want to square off this particular order at, uh, if, if say you had purchased this at say 800 and uh, something at say like 917, okay? And now you are making some of the other profits. So you, now you have reached a price of the LTP of 110, uh, I mean 1010. So now you want to just square off this order. So you cannot do a square off by placing a sell order. You just have to modify this particular, this particular uh, trigger pending order. So how you can do is, you can just right click on this and you need to click on the exit order button. Now when you click on the exit order button, it is going to sell that particular uh, share of Sun Pharma into the market at the current market price. It won't ask you for a price. So you won't, you can modify the particular trigger price. If, if you can, if you, if you can check over here, this is the modify order. I can click on this and I can modify the range, but you cannot set a selling target. You can only place a stop loss where you are going to protect your losses up to. So I want to exit this particular order. I feel that my target has reached now. So what I'll be doing is like, you just need to, you just need to exit this particular open order, which says trigger pending. So I'll just click on this. I'll click, it, it will ask me for a confirmation. I'll just click on yes. And you can see there, it has just got squared off. You can see the status has completed. So I had bought at something and I have sold this at something. So this is how you will be squaring off a cover order. You cannot square off a cover order by placing an independent order because it is a dependent order on a stop loss. So you just need to square off the particular stop loss. Now, again, we have uh, something called as an OCO, which is similar to cover order, but I would say this is an advanced version of cover order. Now, why it is an advanced version of cover order is when you placed a cover order, there were only two legs, which says the first leg and the second leg. So your first leg was a buy order and the second leg was a selling stop loss order. Now, what if I want to also place a target as well? So here in this case, say at 841, I am buying something. I want to keep my target at like 830 and I want, I feel that I should keep a target of like 900. So that is not possible with cover order, but that is definitely possible with an OCO. So OCO stands for uh, one cancels the other. This is also known as a bracket order. Now, how do you place or how do, what are the benefits of using an OCO? So I just said uh, it is uh, more advanced than a cover order and you will enjoy the same kind of leverage that you are you will be enjoying with a cover order so in this case if you can see there are few fields that we have uh, freezed which is your order type so in cover order we saw that your first leg is always market but in this case but in an oco your first leg is always a limit order that means you have to give some price at which it will get triggered then your product is always uh, always freeze to intraday when you're place, placing an OCO because this is an intraday order and you cannot take it, you cannot carry it or convert it for the next particular day. You cannot take it on a delivery basis. So this is a reason limit and intraday are both uh, freezed for this particular things. So I'll just show you what do you mean by a first leg, second leg and third leg. So this is the price section is your first leg. Stop loss is your second leg and take profit is your third leg. So in this case, when you're placing an OCO, you're, if you're placing, if you want to buy something at 841, so just give that price of 841. 
then in the stop loss you cannot input the price you just provide the difference from the price so i want to square it uh, off at like i want to set the stop loss at 830 so i'll do i'll calculate it by 841 minus 830 that comes to 11 points so i'll input 11 over here and i want a stop loss say at like uh, 860 61 so that is like 20 points from 841 so i will just input 20 over here and i will push the particular order so this is how you place a bracket order you don't input a price when you're giving a stop loss and a take profit you just in have to input the difference from the price so i will just place this particular order so if i place this order this order will go into the exchange but as i said these are like dependent orders a co and an oco these both are dependent orders so in an oco it will be a three legged order so it will wait for the first leg to get triggered only when the first leg gets triggered you will you will get to see the second leg and the third leg so this is how it works so in this case i am just placing this order at 841 so i have placed it and you will be only able to see the first leg You, you will be only able to see the first leg over here. Ideally, it should have been three legs, but your first leg is not yet executed. Whereas in the case of a cover order, we place that of the first leg was always market, so that got executed and the second leg was visible. But in this case, till the time the first leg is not executed, you won't be able to see the second and third leg. So what I'll do is I'll just modify this and I'll play, I'll just, I'll just buy it at the current market price by the way this is how you'll be able to see the modify screen so only when uh, you modify whenever the first leg is executed at that time you'll see the second and third leg and only then you can modify the second and third legs so i'll this just place it at a very high price say like 1000 Okay, something went wrong here, just a second. I'll place it at 1000. Let me check the circuit limits. So I'll check the circuit limits first, Sun Pharma. Circuit limits are not updated due to mock session. So I'll place an OCO thousand and a difference of eleven. Okay, so my order got rejected saying of orders out of the circuit limits. So I'll try one more script. So something, say like Access Bank. So I'll try for Access Bank. So this is basically the mock session. That's the reason we are noticing this, it's this kind of errors. I'll keep this a little higher. So I need to check the circuit limits for this as well. 813. Okay, so I placed an OCO and all the OCOs got triggered then and there itself. So it was executed at 500, 513. So I need to keep a little more difference. So this uneven behavior you always notice in a mock section. So I'm keeping this at a range of 50 and this at a range of 50. So I have placed an OCO now. 
So uh, if you can check, uh, I have placed an OCO for Access Bank, and this is the order. I placed it, this was my first lead, in fact. Uh, the price was 600, and the, and the price, if you can see OCO over here, and this is 600. So this is my target, and this is my stop loss. So what will happen over here is C. As the name suggests, this is OCO. One cancels the other. Now what? How? I'll, I'll just explain you how the logic works. So this has got triggered at some say about 600. We had a difference of 50-50 on both the sides. That was on stop loss and our target. So whenever a stop loss is triggered, the particular target is cancelled. Whenever a target is hit at that time, the stop loss order is cancelled. So this is why it is called as one cancels the other. So if you are an intraday trader and you want you want like an extra leverage plus you want to set a stop loss as well as target in in this way, then always use an OCO where uh, your first leg will be the limit order, then the stop loss and then the square off. So in this case, what I'll do is like, I'll just, I'll just, uh, I'll just square off one of the orders and you'll notice that the other leg will get automatically canceled. So if in case I feel that, no, again, uh, the rate I was looking out for, it won't reach now. So I'll just cancel my order. I, ju I just, I just want to uh, exit my order. By the way, cover orders and uh, OCOs cannot be cancelled, they can be only exited because those are dependent orders and not independent orders. So that's the reason I will just right click on it. I'll just click on the exit order button and my orders will get then and there exited. So I'll just, before exiting, I'll just show you what will happen. So these are like two orders. So one will get completed and the other one will get cancelled because it's an OCO. So I'll just click on exit. I'll click on yes. So if you can see here, you have got the desired result. So this has got completed and this has got canceled. So this is how an OCO works due to the dependency on each and each other. Now this is this order that I just place is a normal OCO. So what do you mean by a normal OCO? A normal OCO means a regular order. Now we also provide one more facility in an OCO, which is known as a trailing tick or a trailing stop loss. Now, what do you mean by a trailing stop loss? A uh, trailing stop loss is where it will it will trade as per your stop loss moves up. Uh, I mean, the LTP moves up. So in this case, let's take an example. Say the price is at 570. You have uh, placed a stop loss at say 560 and uh, you have set a target of 600 now whenever the ltp will move like one rupee on an upside your stop stop loss will keep jumping from 800 uh, 560 to 561 so in this case if you see we have something called as ticks so you are able to see the ticks so it says the tick size is 0 0.05 and the tick I have entered is 20. So if I enter the tick as 25, you will see that this particular price will change. So what this means? So whenever my particular uh, LTB, that which is currently at 570, if it moves from 570 to 571.25, and if my stop loss, if my stop loss is set at 560 then it will jump from 560 to 561.25 so this is how a trailing tick works so when will this benefit a user so it will benefit as uh, as the market will move up 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 and then it starts coming back so say about you had set this particular trailing stop loss at 570 and then again from there it has just moved up to say like 590 and as your particular stop loss moved with the particular uh, ltp it will come and it will stay at uh, 800 uh, sorry 581.25
so if the particular uh, ltb comes uh, down again to 581 and 25 so their stop loss will get triggered so this is how a trailing tick works so if if you want to use a feature of a trailing stop loss then you can use it in this way now there are some parameters attached to this trailing stop loss that the minimum tick uh, that you can place is 20. so if i'm placing the minimum tick at 20 then it will accept my order if i input something lesser than 20 then it won't uh, it won't accept so say like i'm inputting something like this and if i'm inputting the buy price then it will say the trailing tick cannot be lesser than 20. so it should be always either 20 or more than 20. So in this case, if I'm inputting, say, even if 50, so it will accept my order and it will take me to the next page. So this is how a trailing tick works. So the, the other thing with trailing tick is like, you can only set the trailing tick only for the one time. When you, once you place the order, you won't be able to modify your trailing ticks. So whenever you're uh, trading with a trailing tick, so just be careful that you are well versed with the concept that how it's going to function. So this is how you place a trailing stop loss. So I have just placed it at this particular price. And it is the same way how an OCO works. So it will just accept it and it won't show me what trailing ticks I had inputted. But it will accept my order and your particular stop loss will start trailing if the LTP moves on the higher side. So this is how you place a bracket order. Now, whatever orders we have uh, placed through the order entry, some of them have got triggered. I mean, some of, if you can check the status over here, most of the orders have got completed. So basically, I can only check. Okay, so my OCO got triggered and triggered on both the sides. Okay. So you can see there are multiple complete orders. So I want to just view how the completed orders are. So I'll just refresh once again. So I'll show you the position books. So this this was the order book that we were uh, viewing first. Now this is the position books that I'll just come to. I'll just click on the expand button and you'll see a lot of positions that I have. Like I have nearly five positions out here. So positions uh, shows that how much quantity is still open. This is nothing but but open positions. So you will see this column called as the net quantity. So the net quantity has. So Sun Pharma in Sun Pharma for the product type as CO, I don't have any quantity pending because my net quantity is zero. If you check in Sun Pharma, this is for an intraday order. So here I have two quantities pending. So this could be one particular script, but the products are different. That's the reason it is showing you separately. So this is like two quantity I have. I see, I see I have 101, that's an intraday. Then I have uh, like in Axis Bank, I have 100 quantities in intraday. And in Axis Bank, I have minus one. So minus one, this means that I have not bought it. I have short sold it. So whenever you'll see a minus sign, that means this is a short sell order. That's in OCO. So over here, if you can see, uh, I have all the positions out here. Now, if I right click on this, on a CO or an OCO, I won't be able to see any of the options. But if I normally right click on a Sun Pharma or an ICICI or an Axis, I'll be able to see two options such as a square off and a conversion convert position. So for an Axis bank, even if there is some quantity, I am not able to right click. The only reason is like, as I uh, during the time uh, during the time I was explaining a cover order and an OCO, those two orders are dependent orders and not independent orders. So the dependency of those uh, OCO and OCO is kept in the order book itself. So as you know, there are the second leg and the third leg that comes with a CO and OCO. So whenever you want to square off 
a cover order or a OCO, you need to just exit that particular order from the order book. You won't be able to see that over here. But in case of an independent order, independent orders can be squared off from the position books, as like you are able to see it for a Sun Pharma, ICICI Bank, or an Axis Bank. So if you just click right click on this, you'll be able to see options of square off and position conversion. What do you mean by a square off? Square off meaning you have like 100 quantities over here. You just can click on the square off button and it will ask for quantities how much you wish to sell. So this is basically a sell order. So it won't ask uh, you like a in a traditional order entry like you just need to input uh, the product type and everything. This gets inputted directly and you just need to mention the particular quantity such as I want to square off 50 quantity. I'll just click on 50 and I'll place the order. So if you can check, I've just placed the order and this has now updated to 50. So I had 100 quantities over here and 50 has been square, squared off. You can check that into this bifurcation. So we have something called as a buy quantity. We have something called as a sell quantity. Then we have something called as a CF quantity. CF stands for carry forward. So these are like, this will show you the overnight positions. So if there, is, if there is something buy or a sell that is happening uh, on intraday, that is like in a day, then you will see the updation under a buy quantity and a sell quantity. If you have bought some shares a day back or any like a three days back or a four days back, then the that particular thing will be shown under a CF quantity. If the CF quantity is on a positive side, that is you had bought something, then this will be a positive number. And if you have uh, if you have short sold something as like we have a short sell position over here, this particular column will show a minus sign. So like a minus 50 or something like that. So in this case, currently we have 50 quantities pending. And this is how we just squared off the position. So currently we don't have uh, a square out square off at a limit or a square off at a stop loss available. We will make that available. Uh, in the coming time, so all the orders will be sent at the market or at the market price itself as for now. Then we have something called as convert positions. So what do you mean by convert position? So you can check over here itself. If if uh, when will a person use this? So when you place an intraday order, as you know, we provide you some leverage. So like a 15 times for a cash or three times for a futures or an options. So uh, whenever you place uh, intraday orders, we provide you some of the other leverage. So if, if by any chance you feel that you wish to carry this positions for the next day. So at that time, what will happen is like, you just have to come to a position book. You just have to click on the convert position option. You can just input the quantity that you need to convert. Say like, I want to convert 10 quantity and I'll click on the done button. So when I click on the done button, my position gets converted. So if you can see this particular thing, I had a balance of 50. Now I have converted 10 from it. So the balance remain is like 40 and the new particular position is created, which shows me that 10 quantities have been kept in delivery which will not be squared off at 315 so only 40 shares will be squared off because i have taken a leverage and for this i have paid the entire cash because i have selected delivery so 10 particular uh, shares will be carry forward for the next day into my dmat account so this is how do you convert even if you want to do do a reverse uh, reverse conversion from delivery to entry and if the position is visible in a position book you can do it again i'll just i'll just uh, convert the entire 10 quantity back so if you can check my position book has been updated to 50 again so i had a bifurcation of uh, 40 and 10 i just converted 10 back to intraday so this has got added back so this is how you convert a position now, as I told you previously, CO and OCOs cannot be converted to the next day because those are position, uh, those are intraday orders and those are dependent orders and not independent orders. So this is how you use a position book. 
Now, again, the same concept we have followed for the detail page, the way we have an order book and the way we have in uh, a watch list. So whenever you click on any of the orders, the secondary view will be available on the right hand side. So anyone uh, wishing to know what the realized M2M or the unrealized M2M, so you can just click on this and this figures will get updated. Now, everything this happens on a real time basis, the M2M will be refreshing on a real time basis. It's just that the market is not live at the moment, so you will not be able to see the particular reads. So even the LTP is real time. So in relation to the LTP, your M2M will be starting, will get updated. So even when, even when, if you wish to like, uh, whenever the market is on the realized M2M and the real, unrealized M2M, this will also be reflecting and updating at lifetime. So again, we have a filter option available here as well. So if I want to just, just I have a big list of positions and I would just want to search like ICICI. So I just input ICICI and I got the detail of ICICI. So even the filter option is available here. So this is my mini view. So again, I'll come to this particular position and I have something called as holdings. Now, what do you mean by a position and what do you mean by a holdings? So whenever you uh, whenever you take a positional trade, so positional trade, uh, I mean, you're carrying the position for the next day. OK, if it is if it is a future or an option script, then that will be visible in the position book because there is a certain expiry time and an expiry date to it. So those are called positional orders. And if you're buying something overnight for uh, for a cash segment that is for an equity segment on from the next day it will start showing into your dmat account because there is no expiry to it so you can hold it for a long term so that's the reason we have to maintain it separate separately so that is maintained in a dmat account and all those things you will be able to see in this holding sections so if you can see i have uh, some positions some uh, particular holdings uh, i have added into the list so this is uh, the particular positions that I have. So I have Reliance one quantity. This is the balance quantity that I have. Then this is a haircut if you're using collateral collateral facility, then the haircut percentage and the haircut value you'll be able to see it over here. If you want to sell any of the particular scripts, then you can just click on the sell button and order entry will open. You just need to enter the price at what you need to sell at and you need to particularly sell that particular order. Now here you, you will see that CO and OCO won't be uh, available because you're selling a delivery and these are not intraday orders. Even uh, this is uh, a delivery and not an intraday order, so you'll only see an option of a delivery. So this is how you normally place uh, a particular order, say about 900 I place, I place a sell order and my position got updated. So this is how. So this is how you can check your delivery orders in the position book. So whatever orders I have placed, you can just go to the filter. So I just uh, sold. It got rejected for some reasons due to the square of circuit limits. So this is how you place. A particular square of a delivery positions. So uh, I'll get to the charts section now. So chart is something that a technical now you need for a technical analysis. So I have uh, I'll just add a chart of Axis banks. So you have two ways of adding a chart. You can right click on the chart section and it gets added, or you can again use a universal search the way we used for a watch list. And then this is how it shows. So this is a mini view. I'll just maximize it. So I'm currently using the scroll button on my mouse from which I can just zoom in and zoom out. So I'm just zooming in. I'm just zooming out. If I move, if you want to move right and left, I'll just click once and hold it. And I'll just move left and right to move, uh, to move the charts. I have got a crosshair activated, so I'll just I'll just disable my crosshair. So 
this is the volume bar these are the this is currently the candle chart that i'm having and i'll start with the chart types now so these are the multiple charts that we currently have in upstocks so a candle line ohlc bar and a lot of charts something called as hekinashi as well used by many of them then we have renko we have kagi so we can have just like this is this is something called as a kagi then we have baseline delta then we have the mountain chart as well so uh, the candle chart is like widely used so i'll just uh, keep candle just available for my analysis then this is called as the time intervals so we have a multiple time intervals available over here so such as 1 minute 5 minutes 10 30 so these are some historical ones that is a day or a week so i can just click on a month and I, we have a data available from 2005 so you'll be able to see that on a daily chart then uh, again we have a data of say for a one minute candle we have available for like 30 days so you can just drag and drag and just move left so if even if it stops it will start loading the data it will take like a second to load and you'll get a lot of candles uh, just for analysis so we have just uh, tried to make the chart section very much comfortable for the users because that is something which is needed the most so you have a lot of uh, intervals out here and you have we have given a lot a lot of data to you which you can use it for your analysis then we have something called as indicators so this is this is a section of indicators so we have like 100 plus indicators so the list is quite big so that's the reason we have given a search bar so you can just input the indicators such as i need to into input bollinger bands now so i'll click on this and it gets auto plotted if i want to change something i just don't want this thing highlighted so i'll just remove the tick and click on the apply settings button so this has got removed i want to change the period so i'll just apply and the period changes again so this is how i apply an indicator i want something called as an macd i'll apply that as well so my macd that has been applied if i want something called as an rsi so i'll click on that and my rsi is now available with the overbought and oversold lines so if i want to move the this particular indicator at the top so this gets so this is how we move it so currently if i want to remove any of the indicators i can just go over here and this is the list of indicators that i have currently added this is the filter that i have applied i can just clear the filter and see the list once again and this is the settings panel so if you want to edit edit some of the parameters you can just click on that particular uh, indicator such as bollinger brands and you'll see all the fields of that you can just change and update it so i'll update the color if so that the color has changed now if you just hover on any of the overlays so you can just if you hover it you will see show see that as a little in a highlighted way so that gives you a better way that how it is looking currently so if I want to remove any of the indicators, I can just click on this particular option and it gets removed. If I want to remove everything, I can just click on the remove all option and it gets removed. Now, some of the widely used uh, indicators such as a moving average, so a simple moving average or an exponential moving average, you will find that in the section called as moving, moving averages. And by default, a simple moving average will be plotted. Then there is a drop down in type where you can select exponential moving average you can click on that and you can click on the apply settings button and this is this will be uh, exponential moving average so this is how you plot a moving average then whatever indicators such as an atr or a force index or uh, stochastics if you wish to apply you can just apply them and uh, all the, you can modify the setting as per your preferences so as of now, I'll just remove uh, this particular in the indicators from here. Now there is also there are also some people who 
also wish to apply some some kind of a drawing tools so if you if you can see this like a pen or a pencil kind of an icon you can just click on this and a drop down will be activated so this drop down has a multiple things into it so something i want to draw on a free hand so i can just draw on a free hand basis and i want something called as a Fibonacci retrenchments, so I can just Fibonacci click on the Fibonacci, and I'll get a list called as retrenchments arc or a fan. So I'll 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 use the retrenchment at this point. So for using the retrenchment, you can just select the retrenchment from here. If you want to change the colors or the ratios, you can change it from here. You set it at a point. So this is this is my point. If you can see, I'll just click once and i'll start moving it on the upper side and the where the the point where i need to dro drop it i'll just go here and click again so this is how i use a fibonacci if you want to undo it we have a undo button you can just click on the undo button it will get removed if you want to add it back we also have a redo button you click on the redo button so this is how you use a retrenchment this is an arc you can just click once then this is how you plot an arc so if i want to remove this again i can click on the undo button then we have something called like pitchfork as well if you want to use pitchforks so this is how you use a pitchfork so you can we also have this thing available for you then uh, there there is also called as a trend line so if if i want to measure this trend so from this point i'll click uh, from this point and i'll drop it here or i'll just place it here this is what the trend is so if i if i drop if if you can just see uh, just besides uh, this section i mean you can just you know, just have a look on this this particular section so i i am just measuring that and that is getting changed each and every time so i want to see the levels right from the starting point till the ending time point what is the price fall or the percentage fall or how many bar is it is uh, covering so you will be able to see that as well which might uh, help to your analysis analysis so this is a trend line that you can draw as per your convenience now you want to you want to measure some of the if 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 many of the people who want to set their own support and resistance levels so we have something called as a horizontal line as well so i'll just change the color of the line first so this is something called i'll take in a blue okay so this is uh, i want to keep my uh, resistance levels somewhere over here so i'll just with the help of this i'll just take this a little down i'll click and just bring it down now this is something i want, want to place my resistance at so i'll just click once so this is my resistance then over here i want to place my support line so i'll just click once again over here so this is my support line so if i want to name this as a support line or something like that i can use a call out feature or a text box from here so i'll click i'll use a call out so i'll click on this and i'll start typing like this is my resistance i'll save it I wish to like uh, call this as a support for with a text box here. So I have something called as a text tool. So I'll start typing. I'll just save it. So this is how you can use the study lines. The study lines you need to activate by clicking on this. So once you uh, once you select any of the study lines and you want to stop drawing, you just click on the none button and that particular thing is stopped. So I'll just clear drawings as for now. So this is how uh, this particular things look out. Uh, the other thing is that we have added something called as a day break. So if you can see this particular section, so I'll just select a five minute interval over here. So this is the day break line. 
so this gives you a very good uh, view of uh, the trading session so this is my one trading se trading session this is second trading sessions so how the trend has fed so this is what you'll be able to see based on the trading uh, particular uh, particular uh, day breaks now this is something called a previous close line that we have added so just on the basis of charts you want to see where was yesterday's close so this was the yesterday's close and on the basis of this you can see how the particular uh, day that has fed off so i'll select say an icici for this so this is how it shows so this is my previous close then it went from down it went up then it came again down then it closed near the previous close levels so this is how you use the charting section in upstocks so this is the advanced charting that we have got if you want to zoom in with the if if by any chance you're using a laptop and you don't have a mouse in place and if you feel like the scroll button you don't have a scroll button to scroll in so you can use the plus or a minus uh, sign on the charts to just zoom in and zoom out so this is the charting section now we have added an important tool uh, which is code panel so code panel is normally used by an intraday trader now what is a code panel so uh, we got a survey uh, we got a feedback in a survey saying that most of them are like intraday traders and they don't use any of the chart they just trade based on the prices and price actions so what we do did, did is like we created a code panel if you if you check on each and every block uh, there is a script name over here there is a mark to mark i mean the m2m that is a profit and loss they are getting and there is something called as a net quantity that how much quantity you hold and the buying and the selling price with the quantity now what happens is like uh, this is also known as p trading so you're inputting the uh, you're not going to input any of the prices over here so but this this feature needs to be activated uh, before you start using the one click trade so this is the section that we have which, which says one click trade so if you if you just click on any of the buy order sell buttons uh, order entry opens which is a traditional order entry that we are currently using but you don't want to use a traditional order entry you just want to click on this button and your order should get submitted so for that you need to activate a one click trade so whenever you click on a one click trade it will give you a message uh, the risk involved in placing this particular order and you need to enter your past code so that is like I'll input my past code and I'll click on the verify button and you'll see the one click trade has been activated so now what will happen so when the last time I clicked on the buy button my order got uh, my order got uh, so my order entry got open but in this case when I click my order should go direct without asking me for an order entry so when i click this particular order you can see my order has been placed into the market and my net quantity has turned from zero to one and this is what the m2m that i'm currently getting so i click on again on that and you see again i have placed the order and the net quantity is updating i'll buy it again see for like 10 quantity i can just click on the buy button once again and again it has bought me 12 shares so as an, as the quantity is increasing my mtm is also increasing so currently i am running under losses of 201 so i'll just want to square off this particular order i can just uh, just click uh, just input 12 over here and click on the sell button so i clicked on the sell button and my net quantity is zero now and my m2m i have square off the position into losses which says 45.40 now you need to be very careful now you need to be very careful when you place a, a, a one click trade because here no confirmation will be asked when you place an order so be careful with your clicks so that you don't click anything wrong out here because that is again going to send that particular order if you feel that you you want to use it well, this particular code panel like a watch list and don't want to use one click trade 
you just can switch this off and when I switch this off and I click on the buy button it will again open me a traditional order entry now these are the, the code panel when you place any of the orders some some things are freezed at our end such as the order will be accepted only as an intraday order then the validity always be a day and the order type will always be a market when a one click trade is activated so this orders will be always 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 will be accepted as intraday orders so even if you uh, buy anything from here with one click trade still the position will be uh, visible in the position book and the entry will be created in the order book and you can square off the positions from here as well so if you if you if you're buying something from uh, a code panel it will reflect in a position book so if, even if you're buying something from over here and that particular block has been added over here and if it's an intraday order it will still going to update into your code panel and in your position book so this is uh, about the code panel and the one click trade now we have something called as a balance sections at the top so when you just click on when you just hover on the rupee symbol you will see a particular balance out there which says a total balance a margin use or an m2m or a net balance when you click on that you will see a particular pop-up coming up okay i guess i hit the back button Currently, we have not activated the auto reconnecting feature. So whenever I hit the back button for any of the reasons, it just takes me out. So we are again going to uh, we are again going to activate the reconnecting feature so it doesn't log you out just by clicking on backspace button. So we are currently working on that. So I was talking about uh, something regarding this. So this is my balance section. So you will see something called as a net balance. You will see something called as a total balance. Then we have margin used M2M. We have instant pain, atom, ad hoc, span margin, and an exposure margin. Now, uh, what do you mean by net balance? First, let's start with the total balance. So total balance is the addition of whatever balance you had on the previous day. Then if you had made a pain of something, instant pain, or if you have done some kind of an NEFT transfer, so if you do NEFT transfers, then the margin is given uh, by a risk management team that has been updated manually. So that or so based on that, a uh, total margin is calculated. So currently I have a total margin of this much, which says 25 lakhs, 42,058 then i have something called as margin used so if i have blocked my money into some of the other positions so i have few of the positions i will uh, open over there or if i have made some losses so for that reason as well for that reason as well uh, my position can, amount can be blocked so whenever you take a position or whenever you place an order at that time your order margin will be blocked and that will be visible under the use margin section and the balance that is available then after will be available under net balance. So total balance minus margin use will give you this particular section, net balance. So whenever you wish to place a fresh order, you always have to check what the net balance is. Then we have something called as an M2M. This is uh, the loss that I have incurred in a position. So uh, this is basically the realized loss. So that I've been cut in the position. So this will be, uh, even if you release the positions, the this much amount will be blocked in terms of losses. So this is a total M2M loss I'm currently incurring on all the positions that I have. Then this is something called as an instant pain. So we use Atom for instant pain. There is a premium gateway that we use it. And if you're, if you're doing any transactions to Atom, it will show under pain and if, you have done an NEFT transfer and the particular margins have been updated by a risk management team, then that will be shown under ad hoc, the way currently it is showing for me. Then we have something called a span margin and an exposure margin. So if you are dealing in a futures or an options contract, so basically on a futures contract and an option writing contract, 
then uh, a full margin is blocked like a span margin and an exposure margin so we normally show the bifurcations of the entire span plus exposure margin into this section so if you have a uh, multiple positions uh, uh, open in the position book so the combined span margin and exposure margin will be available into this section now from this section itself you can do the funds pane as well so that has been uh, added now so you can click on the add funds section and it will show me both the banks uh, i currently have two banks linked to my account so i have a state bank and i have an hdfc bank i need to enter the amount so the criteria of what we have said is like your basically by atom it is set is like you cannot input anything lesser than 100 if you input anything lesser than 100 then it will give you this particular reason and if you input anything more than 10 lakhs then this will give you this particular so we are will be we would be stopping you if you are entering a maximum or a minimum limit so currently if i do a um, if I, click, if I just enter 200 over here and I click on add funds, it will open a new pop-up. It will it will tell me ask me that whether you have blocked the pop-up. So currently I have blocked it. So I'll click on this. I'll click on allow always. I click on finished. I'll click on add funds again. I need to enter a amount. And a new particular uh, tab will open. I have created a I have selected uh, SBI, I guess. So uh, this particular page I'll get when once I log in into this, I make the payments. So I'll just show you what shows into the upstock section at the time when I am currently doing my uh, payments with the bank. So this is how it shows. So once if I cancel, even if I cancel this, it will show me a transaction cancel message on upstocks if the transaction is successful i will get a transaction successful message message and i can just click on ok and i can see the particular uh, funds under the funds paying section now one thing that uh, whenever you do a uh, paint to atom so it takes nearly about 30 seconds to one minute for the funds to get reflected so for we have for that we have a refresh button over here you can just start clicking on this button and in in a minute it will show you under this you don't have to close and open it again you can just use the uh, refresh button now currently we have not added the functionality of withdrawing so that will be available soon this option so this is uh, what uh, this is what the platform uh, that you have just seen is available for trading so now this we have just uh, we have just created a trading panel as of now with fixed widgets so we are going to add uh, features in the coming time so if you if you can just uh, if you can just if you're just following us then you can see that every 15 days we do give a release of some of the other thing so in the coming three to six months you will be uh, getting a lot of features so something like uh, like a uh, top movers or top gainers uh, and that's that kind of features and currently I'm just going to show you uh, what are currently developers are working at uh, I'll just open a different branch so this is my development branch and basically we are currently working on a concept if you if you can just see over here all the widgets are fixed so you cannot move any of the widgets so that is what we are currently working on if you can, if you can see this is one widget that has been created so this is currently my development branch so i can add multiple widgets in this and this one widget i added if i want to add multiple charts then even that is possible i can just arrange it as as in how i want so these are like four charts uh, two charts i'm adding one more chart i i want to keep this on the extreme right then even that is possible so i'm 
if i if i if you are using a multi monitor screen now currently i am currently uh, presenting this in a laptop view that is like a 14 or 15 inch screen so if you have a bigger monitor or a multi monitor screen then you will be able to see uh, all the three charts or the four charts or whatever you would like to arrange it in so so i am adding one more chart so i want to place this chart over here so even that is possible so this is co completely customizable so even if you want to increase the watch list size even that is possible so currently uh, if you can see this uh, in this upstocks uh, you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to reorder the columns you won't be able to hide the columns but with uh, the development of the current uh, floating widgets you'll be able to do that currently we have not activated that sections but that is that is something that is doable so you can set your preferences that what all columns are important for you if you feel that as a user uh, with price change and percentage you feel that open high low close is also important for you so you can just hide all this or you can just remove this or you can just keep this at the back and you can add those columns over here so that is completely customizable even if you you can just uh, you can just move this if you can if you want to add order book in this session even that is fine you, if you want multiple charts you can add as many charts as you want currently we are going uh, set a limit of four so you can uh, add that many charts so even that is possible so this is what we are currently moving uh, working on so uh, this this will give you a lot of flexibility as this can be customized at your end so this is what uh, will be available in a month from now so we are currently working on this so so yeah so this is uh, something that uh, will be available in a month from now so if i want to move uh, if you want to just see how it works so i can scroll it vertically as well i can move to do this horizontally as well so that differs from your screen size so currently my view is small so this is how it is showing me if you have a bigger screen you have a multi monitor screen this is how you can set up and the only thing of uh, the only thing uh, we wanted to show this was like uh, this is not on a desktop this is on a web version and moving widgets on a web version with a multi screen it is possible and we will be doing this and you can uh, do everything on a web itself so even if you log in from a different location even that is fine so this is currently what we are working on and this will be available in a month so uh this video will be available on youtube as well so even if you feel that you have missed any of the things in this video uh the same youtube link you're using you can check in that we also update in update the same into our channel and you can just go you can just refer to that and you can just write whatever whatever questions you have you can just write in the comment section and we will we, are, we will be again replying to those particular questions so thank you for attending uh, today's session so we will be uh, we will be always always be sending you emails if we have any of the webinar schedule so thank you for attending have a great day